I'm Michelle, the manager of marketing at BookPal, and I'm here at the ATD 2016 conference with Stephanie Mead, the author of The Art of Strategic Leadership. Congratulations on the launch of your new book. Can you tell us a little bit about what readers can expect to learn in The Art of Strategic Leadership? Yes, thank you. We're excited about the interest in the book and the important message for leaders at all levels of the organization. What leaders will learn, readers will learn in this book, is that leadership is more than just executing on short-term responsibilities and being operationally effective. What we found is that organizations all around the world are asking their leaders to go about their regular responsibilities in a very proactive and forward-thinking way. And they also want them to have a vision and plan for how they'll shape the future. In our previous books on strategic leadership and applied strategic thinking, we really focused in on the processes and steps for creating strategy. But in this book, we wanted to look at the qualities and characteristics that strategic leaders possess. It really is strategy from the inside out. And we are just very confident that these skills and attributes will help leaders transform their organizations. Each chapter of the book focuses on a different characteristic of strategic leadership. How did you identify these characteristics during your research? That's a great question. Um, what we found is that there are seven key qualities or attributes that strategic leaders possess. Those are the strategic leaders that really stand apart. Now, we're not saying that this is everything you need to know about leadership, but this is really what it takes for a leader to be proactive and forward thinking. We've identified these characteristics as we've studied strategic leadership and strategic thinking through our consulting and training practice over the years. And this has allowed us to study leaders as they apply leadership principles and also as they try to build forward thinking cultures. We've also been able to validate these qualities and characteristics through our surveys and assessments that are part of our workshops on strategic leadership and strategic thinking. So we're growing really rapidly at BookPal and one of the things we struggle with is finding time to step aside from the day to day and be able to focus on big picture plans and goals. So what are a couple tips that you would recommend for being able to manage day to day responsibilities and also plan for the future? You know, that's a great problem to have, and it's a situation that a lot of leaders can relate to because it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day demands and really get pulled into that activity trap. We find that leaders are experiencing that nearly every day. But I think the unfortunate thing about that is sometimes when we do get caught in that activity trap, we may miss opportunities or threats that are on the horizon that could really help us. Um, I would say that one um, tip that I would share is having the discipline to designate some time and energy to working on things that are maybe a longer term priority for you. And that may mean for a lot of leaders that they have to delegate some of their task and, tasks and responsibilities so they have that time freed up to really focus on longer term perspectives. Um, another tip that I would share is that periodically looking at the things you and your team are working on to see if there's some obsolete responsibilities or old tasks that you could really weed out of what you're doing and, and have that time freed up where you can spend it looking forward, looking to the future. And then maybe a third recommendation that I would have is really being clear about your strategic direction and your strategic contribution concept because when you know what it is you're working towards, it's a lot easier to dedicate that time and energy. In the book you talk about creating a culture of ownership. Can you elaborate on some techniques that you've seen other companies do in order to create that kind of culture? Sure. It's a question that we get from a lot of leadership teams who are trying to figure out how to get employees and leaders to think and act like owners. Yet the interesting thing is they sometimes don't know how to build that kind of culture. I think one technique is to try to break down barriers and get people working across boundaries so that they can have a more holistic view of the organization and where the organization is headed. Another technique would be to build a culture of accountability. Now, it's 
often that organizations are very clear about short-term results that people will be held accountable to. But really to enhance ownership in an organization, it's also important to shift the focus not only from short-term accountability, but to a longer-term accountability so that people know what they're, they're working towards in the longer term as well. Chapter 8 is about the art of risk. What would you say is the number one reason why leaders are afraid to take risks in their organization? Well, from what I've observed and studied with leaders is that the fear of failure can a lot of times paralyze a leader. Um, and then on top of that, a lot of times the organization's cultural assumptions and beliefs about risk can also prevent leaders from thinking outside the box, thinking longer term, thinking about possible risks, and really doing something new, bold, and different. But strategic leaders understand that you have to take risks to be successful. The key differentiator is that they go about, they, they pick the right risks and they think deeply about those and then they go after the right ones. And then when they do fe experience fear, fears of failure or they have failure or setbacks or challenges, they're willing to learn from those situations and then pick themselves up and continue on. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. Are there any last thoughts that you'd like to leave with your readers? Well, we appreciate the opportunity to share some thoughts about the art of strategic leadership. I really believe that more strategic work needs to be occurring in organizations, from the top to the bottom and across every team and function. And I really believe that readers will be able to find something, find some just simple ideas that they can implement that will help them make a difference in their organization. Well, thank you so much for coming to speak with me. And if anybody is interested in purchasing the book, you can find a link to the product on our website in the description below.